nerve that's that's separate from any other nerve. There isn't just one nerve that sticks out there that sends some sort of Wi-Fi signal to others. You literally have one nerve. It's way up here. Then everything comes out of it. So, like I said, everything is connected. You start going that haywire, things go off up here, things you don't even know. Believe me, the things you don't even know start going nuts a little bit in your head, things reverberate through the rest of your body. So physical conditions, um, emotional conditions can combine to make a more difficult issue to release. So we release the nerves, we release the body better. So again, we'll go back to that baseline move again that we just did. Just notice, does your body feel a little bit more settled? You have a little bit more gentle sway. So I'm not looking for muscle tension where your body's holding necessarily, other than maybe your quadriceps or glutes. I'm looking for just you have that sway, that natural sway in your body that we were talking about before. Do you still feel tense? Or as you take a breath, do you feel like you can settle into your movement? I want you to just mostly notice your feet and your breath at this point. Do your feet feel connected to the ground? just like you can feel all 10 toes, the arch, the heel, and so on. And then you also feel like you have an ease of breath and release. Good, open the eyes, take that ball to position point one. So we all know where that is at the very center of the arch of the foot, compress the ball completely, move the other foot so the feet are parallel to each other. If you can, take your socks off. Good, shift back. When we're done with this, Marina, put your socks right back on if your tootsies are cold. But contact skin to skin, of course, is optimal. Press back and forth. And again, you're not penguin stepping. Let yourself sway. Remember, when your mom held you as a baby, when your mom holds you, when a mother holds a child, they sway back and forth. It's almost this weird, natural thing that happens in our body. Go ahead and pause. Take your arms up and over your head, reach. Take your arms back down, roll your arms around the midline of the body. So you're telling all the joints where to go. And then step back with your left foot, move the ball to where the arch meets the heel and you're not on the heel and you're not really on the arch anymore. And you're just moving that ball side to side. So you wanna try to have the ball a little bit further back, Marina. And then you wanna try to have the ball so it's just kind of around the arch. So if this was the base of my foot and this was the base arch, I'm actually putting the ball right there on my heel. So it's just above the heel, just below the arch, back and forth. Now begin to move that ball back to the heel and back. And then, so also if you can see, the ball is actually coming outside of my foot. The ball is tacky enough to be able to stick to my foot. I want you to try to keep your foot in place and move the ball back and forth. So your toes stay in place. It's like you're going up and over the ball, up and over the ball. Good, keep the compression on the ball as much as you can. Good, so you're also using the hip, you're moving the knees slightly, and then bring that ball back to position point five, that fifth position there, and you're gonna shear. A shear is a tight, wiggle on that ball. So it's if you're taking one piece of skin and moving it around. You're not rubbing on it. You're actually just moving the skin back and forth. Keep going. Pause. Just let the tissue respond. Release, pause. And then we're going to go to position point two, which is behind the big toe knuckle. Press down in the foot and then keep that pressure all the way to the heel. Then position point two, right behind the knuckle of the second toe. Push to the heel, try to keep pressure the entire time. Position two, to the heel. Position two on the third or fourth toe, whoop, falling over. And position two behind the pinky toe. And then just what's called friction. So we did what's called a rinse as at the same time we were doing what's called position point pressing. Position point pressing is designed to bring hydration up into the joints so the joints function better. Go ahead and pause. Let's take the ball to the second foot, shift side to side. 
breathe in. Ideally, as you do this, you get better at not looking at it the entire time or holding your hands at your hips. Good, and pause, take those arms up, take those arms down, roll around the midline, breathing and down. Move the ball to position point five, press in and begin that movement side to side. Again, think of me holding or someone holding your foot and your heel just going back and forth. So the heel's going back and forth, not the whole, not the top of the foot. Breathing, it's like you're smashing out a cigarette with the ball of your foot. Channel your inner John Wayne, back all the way to the very far end of the heel, all the way back to that position point five, once, actually twice more to the heel, back. So you're looking for consistent pressure with consistent movement. So you're always pressing in with tolerable pressure. So that could be deeper for you than me or it could be lighter for you than me. Back to position point five again. Give it that nice tight shear. Good, and again, your movement can be all the way up to your hip. I sometimes will kind of rub my hand up against my leg. It just kind of feels nice. I can almost track the movement as my hand comes up into my back, into my leg, and I can feel it a little bit more connected. Pause, your leg may feel a little tingly. Move the ball to position point two behind the big toe, push down, keep that pressure, press back. Position point two, second toe, push back. Third toe, push back. Keep that pressure consistent, push back. Last one, push back, and then friction. So friction is this multi-directional movement that actually is kind of like what we did up here in all of these spots. So Dr. Perry Nicholson, who kind of just stopped chasing pains, who do I, who I get my lymphatic work from, is very kind of insistent that if we don't start by clearing the limb first before we start doing deeper work, we will probably go backwards a little bit or just have less of a response. So bring your feet together. Everything is a system. Everything takes a, a practice to get better at it. Roll your shoulders back. I know when I first started doing stuff, it's just kind of a kind of a touch and go. I got some results and sometimes I did it, but it was the consistency of doing it in an orderly fashion that helped me see how to get better results. So again, we're going back to that, just kind of standing at your feet. Notice how you feel your feet now. Notice if you feel a little bit more grounded, a little bit more connected. And the thought is, well, yeah, I just plagued my feet for a while. So of course I feel my feet wrong. Basically, you may feel one side more than the other because one side's taking more attention than the other. Or you may feel both sides equally and they may just feel good. Remember, it, it turns out it's okay that you feel good and own that, own that sensation of feeling good. That is a connection to your nervous system to allow yourself to start owning that sense and you're giving it back to your body. Again, taking in your breath, noticing your feet and your breath evenly, and just noticing if you have more of a gentle, even movement in your whole body. Good. Go ahead and open your eyes. How'd that feel, guys? Good? Good. Go ahead and move the ball away. I'll put them in the boxes later on. All right. So the last thing we're gonna to do today is we're gonna do some original strength work. Now, original strength, of course, works on the pillar of three things. You're breathing diaphragmatically, your, um, your vestibular system, which is the balancing, neurological balancing mechanism inside the brain that literally balances every organ, every movement, almost every thought in your brain. It is the first organ deep inside of your brain that was developed. So, and that nervous system goes, or system affects directly the vagal nerve and the phrenic nerve, which come down the sides of your neck. The vagus nerve crosses and crisscrosses and touches every organ. The phrenic nerve is more designed in fight or flight. It does deal with the lungs, the heart, and the diaphragm primarily. But the vagus nerve comes down. It actually ends in the gut primarily. It goes through, of course, but it ends, the nervous system that's in the gut is by far the same amount in everything that's in the brain. You've got stuff going on in the gut, you've got clogged up in the brain, you've got stuff going on in the brain, you're gonna have stuff going on in your gut, back and forth. Like when people say, 
how my stomach hurts, I'm feeling anxious. Huh, huh, it's connected, turns out. So you can do this all day long if you want. I can. So anyways, maybe that'll be a new exercise. I'll take this on the road and I'll do this. That's all you need to do for good health and wellness. Ah, and then knotted hair. <laughs> anyway, all right, so hands on your belly. You can put them on your ribs, you can put them on your belly, you can hang them by your side, but it connecting to the body is the most connecting to the body. If you want, you can keep your eyes open because that way you're kind of going to see what's around you and you're going to feel what's around you as well. And I want you to have your tongue against the roof of your mouth. Remember that tongue at the roof of your mouth is right behind the teeth and on the hard palate. So it's not just in your mouth at your teeth, it's sucked up to the roof of your mouth as if you're swallowing. <clears throat> then you, your tongue will go up there. Breathe to fill the rib wall. Now, while we're doing this, you might notice your glutes kind of relaxing or maybe the ability to relax them. You may notice some other pieces of information start floating up. Like I'm noticing my right knee is slightly turned in. Okay, I'm just noticing it. And I know this is quiet for you guys who are on the video, but that's kind of the point is that this is a quiet resetting, a quiet restorative allowing of the body to just feel itself and to connect inwardly. Remember, this is in and of itself a movement. So if this all you had, breathing would be the number one thing you would do for exercise. So when someone says, what do you do for exercise? You're like, got it, I breathe. Good, and then now we're gonna look up with our eyes. Look up with your chin a little bit, look down with your eyes, look down with your chin. Again, look up with your eyes, look up with your chin. Always you're going to a place where you're not finding pain. So if you look up and all of a sudden your left foot starts hurting, don't go too high. If you look down and all of a sudden your left shoulder starts bugging you, you went too low. Also notice if you move your head and you can't breathe, not because of me, because I'm talking, but if you're noticing all of a sudden you're not breathing, you're going too fast. And for right now, it's taking a lot of energy just to breathe. So slow down. I'll tell you, this fights every natural instinct to move slowly as I have. Even from the time I was very young, my parents, my family talked about how fast I moved through everything. I was called a garbage disposal. I was called a vacuum cleaner when it came to food because I could just suck it up and be done, move on to the next thing. I ran before I walked, all that kind of stuff. Well, the downside of that is I tend to just get and do, and that's part of my life, which is a good thing when I want to get stuff done, but it's difficult when I want to explain something sometimes because I run over all the little details. That's why I need like a Chandra in my life or a Patty or a few people seem to gravitate towards me who actually are detail oriented. <laughs> I know about the details. I just don't, I just forget to talk about them. Now we're going to look to your right and to your left. Don't get me wrong. I like the details. It's just sometimes I, I, there are, I already processed them where you're like, no, nope, we haven't processed that. We got to go a little bit slower. Like spelling reset correctly. Not intentional. Good, just turning to your right and turning to your left. Now turning is a more challenging movement for the body because turning puts us out of the midline. Midline is the safest position for the body to be in neurologically, neuropathically, um, situationally. When we're asked to look at somebody, we're asked to look forward, we tend to not ask, they're not moving and we're not tracking them like a lion or something like that. But even a lion can know when someone's moving around them. Good, now look up at the far corner, look down at the low corner, look up at a diagonal, look down at a diagonal, up at a diagonal and down. And I know these movements are really small, but these are powerful movements for the nervous system. And very often small is kind of put aside it's like, think of kids, 
little kids, they're cute and everything like that, all that sweet. Uh, but you know what? Bonnie's wants to talk to the adults now. So we bypass the simple, we move to the complex, but then we forget that within the simplicity, we get we get powerful questions. Look up to your right, look down to your left. You get powerful emotion, powerful thought. It may not be complex to you, but it can be really important. Remember also speed, height, knee, you rush past something. And then pause. Now, just looking forward, turn your eyes clockwise, just like you're rolling your eyes in your head, turn your eyes counterclockwise. Good, and then pause. And then we're gonna do cross crawls. Just keep your head up and chest up. Now, can you make sure that you're still breathing diaphragmatically? Notice I'm trying not to speed up. It's like listening to sometimes a guy playing like an American bandstand, they're playing, it's going as slow as they can, but the crowd keeps clapping faster. Just go slow, don't worry. Very often we move quicker out of fear, not, not awareness fear, but oh, I've got to catch my knee or else I've got to put my foot down really quick or else I'm going to fall. Remember, your brain is always going to try to make you safe. To sometimes your disadvantage. Good. And then go ahead and pause. Just standing there, line your feet up as you want, as it's comfortable for you. Bring your shoulders up, around, and back. Just notice. Your body may feel like there's something going on inside of it that you weren't aware of. Maybe you only notice that up to your knee. Maybe your quadriceps are no longer gripped. Maybe your stomach feels just kind of at ease. Maybe your back feels a little bit more settled. Maybe your thoughts aren't racing to all kinds of answers, questions, concerns. Good, and then open your eyes. Good. Turn on your mics. How do you guys feel? Good? Better? Good. 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 How do you guys feel? Good. Good. Patricia, Bev, you can. Getting you know, there. I'm getting there. I'm good. Good. <laughs> Bev feels thumbs up. So the idea, remember, is not that everything has to be big. Most things have to be quite subtle for another thing to work. You literally don't know what's going on in your body. You just don't. We don't know what's going on. Every day I hear about, I went to the doctor, and all of a sudden, like the doctor said, I had fill in the blank. I didn't even know. So it's like, yeah, because it's hard to know, because you can't know everything. And so until we do small, doing the big, it won't make a difference, a big difference. So always go back to your lymphatic reset. That resets the movement system of the body. So the body internally is going to move more efficiently. Reset your breathing because your breathing actually is that kind of life source of movement to every other activity that you do. And then reset your vestibular or your movement patterns by crossing the midline or crossing the midline with your eyes. Now, always know you can always move too fast. You can always do too much and you can always um, push too hard. And so when, when you do that, it's just simple things will come up. You'll feel uneasy. You'll feel out of ease. You'll feel unbalanced. You'll feel a little bit of pain. So know that sometimes you have to move way backwards to be able to move forward. It doesn't mean you stop because if you stop breathing, I promise you, you will stop. Okay. So always go back to your breathing. Your body is desiring to be in equilibrium and, and homeostasis hundred percent of the time, but it will also work to do that against you. If you don't perceive it as safety, you're thinking, I got to keep going. I got to keep going. Your brain's like, turns out I'm just going to give you a headache. Turns out I'm going to make you stop. Turns out I'm going to start making your back hurt. So to do something different is important. So you start finding pain that just starts coming and randomly starts going everywhere. It is serious a sign for change and a giant sign for you to look inside instead of just looking outside to the pain. Remember, the pain will keep moving as long as you keep forgetting to pay attention to it because it's going to start giving you more and more clues. So this up until Wednesday, my suggestion is and my goal for you and my hope for you and I invite you to come into this and to do one of the 
many things that we did for at least a couple of moments, either do just that gentle lymphatic reset, just hit these kind of areas of the body. I will put it up on the Facebook, just the order of it is, I'm not the Facebook, the, the text group, just the order that it is. And it's your job to just do this on a daily basis, nice and light, but be aware of what you're doing and spend a little bit of time in it or do a foot treatment. If you can remember the movements of the foot treatment or just breathe for two to three minutes at a time. <clears throat> Diaphragmatically, tongue at the roof of your mouth, relax. Not big, deep, full breaths like that, but see if you can lay down, sit up, whatever, on your belly, on your back, and we'll do it in all different types of positions. Okay? Any questions? No. Okay. So, winning today, as long 